We are standing tonight upon the brim and watching come to pass and unfold two great scenes. And those two great scenes are these. One of them is the ending of history. And the other one is the ending of time. And many great men down through the ages as long to see this hour that we're now approaching. And as we live in this glorious setting of mortal sun and the breaking of the eternal light, I do feel that we're living in one of the grandest ages that ever man has been permitted to live. Because it's the closing out of time and the blending in of eternity. History only tells us what we have read, what has been. And what's in the future lays in the hand of God. And we find out today that there's not too much history being written. Because I don't think it will ever be used. Both of these great events are running into shallow waters. For instance, the uh, how we're running out the national crises and the national security is running into shallow waters. Traveling around over the world, it seems like not only our nation, but there is no nation knows just what to do. Seems like there is a turmoil everywhere. I go into Africa. They're all afraid of an uprise among the people and communism sweeping the land. I go into Switzerland the same way. And all the other nations in which I have visited, they seem to be that there is an unsettled peace everywhere. Now, you know, our Lord predicted such a time to come. There be unrest among the nations, perplexed of time, distress between the nations. And we have tried everything that seemingly humanly possible to make it last just a little longer. But I believe that we're just running out. I don't believe that there's anything else that we can do about it. We're just at the end of it. We tried for a while on having kings and they wouldn't work. Then they tried democracy. It doesn't work. And we're trying to try dictators and it doesn't work. And each one seems to get just a little bit shallower each time. Now we stand at the great moment when anything could happen. It could be over in five minutes time. That every nation would be laid to powder. And if we're at that time, where ought the church to be? A great crisis. Then also, we have a home life crisis. It seems like that home life is running out in the shallow water. It used to be in a home that father, the head of the house, would sit down in the morning and he would speak with his family and they would all take out the old family Bible and read just a little bit and, and all gather around the table and have prayer. You don't see that no more. And when the day was done and Ma had the dishes washed, they'd all gather in and read some more of the Bible and pray before going to bed. Juvenile delinquency certainly was a, a hard thing to find in them days. 
The boys all went to the fields to work and the girls helped mom with her washing down the creek. But the day we just push a little button and the dishes are all done and Ma's in the car and gone to the card party or out ratting around over the streets and and the, the work's done by a tractor and we just don't have nothing but just a bunch of lazy, idle people. And home life is so neglected till the Bible is laid back till they'd have to hunt for an hour to find one in many homes in America. They go to church on Sunday morning for the religion for about 20 minutes and the pastor takes about 30 minutes. He's called on the board. What is it? Home life is running out. It used to be that father and mother loved and honored and cherished one another um, when she was old and gray and wrinkled up and her poor old face all drawn up and her glasses hanging down over her nose. Pop loved her just as well as he did when she was young and pretty. But today, I don't mean to be critical, but when she gets a little old, he just swaps her for a new model. It seems to be that way, like swapping cars or something. It seems like that real family love don't exist much more. Just something has happened. Home life is running out. We don't have the old American home as we used to have it long years ago. There's another thing that I would like to say. That is, another thing running out is friendship is running out. It don't seem like that we have the friends that we used to have. And the friends that we have are not loyal friends like used to be. It used to be, I can remember when... Someone got sick in the neighborhood that everybody come around and they helped them with all their work and landed a hand to anything could be done. Set up with them all night at a time. As I've often said, it's truth that we hardly know the neighbor's dead until we see it in the paper. Friendship. Papa has the key to the house and Mama has the key. And they're both out and gone half the night, and the children, they don't know where they are, and the little ones are with the babysitter. And that's the way life is lived. Do you know the Bible predicts all these things? So what is it then? It's that we're standing in a position watching these things run out. Let's take church life. There is where it all began. Church life is running out. The people just take the church today almost for an idol. Like a totem pole. Go sit in church five minutes and I've done my religion. Pay in your little contribution, whatever it is, to pay the pastor. And if they don't make that up, they have a little supper and and make it up to the pastor, and if he ain't satisfied, he hauls off to somewhere that'll give him a better wage. Seems like the pastor is not divinely called anymore. Just seems like it's beginning to be a meal ticket to the pastor. That the people, wherever offers him the most money, there he goes. It shouldn't be that way. It should be that a man was called of God to a community. And if he had to lay there like Elijah did on top of the mountain at the brook Cedrath and expect the crows to feed him, he ought to stay till his divine mission is fulfilled. No matter if he gets a penny or not. It should be the call of God first. But it's seemingly it's changed to the call of money or a bigger position and something on that order. Or to become a more popular person in a bigger church or something like that. And then the church in their 
they have let down. They begin to run out. Just watch it unfold. Now, I'm yet under 50 years old, and I can remember going to the Baptist church and the Methodist churches and watching them in an old-fashioned revival when they would shout and praise the Lord and walk up and down the aisles and persuade sinners to the altar. You never see that nowhere no more. They used to have old-fashioned prayer meetings during the time of a revival and a sinner in the neighborhood of boy or girl. And them old mammies and daddies would pray so hard till they had pray conviction on those children. And then make their way down to the altar and there come to Christ. But you don't see that no more. It seems like it's running in shallow waters. It just don't seem like it ought to be that way. And then it used to be that most any of the churches, would, in the years ago when they would have a revival in one church, all the other churches would cooperate. And they would come in and help and send their members over and close up churches and have a revival. You don't see it no more. Now, just what's happened? And what you going to do about it? It's just fulfilling the word of the living God. And it points to post. One of them running out of time and another one the coming of the Lord Jesus for the Holy Spirit definitely spoke and said in the last days the churches would be heady, high-minded, lovers of pleasure more than lovers of God, truce breakers, false accusers, incontinent and despisers of those that were good. So if the Bible has predicted such things to be, how can we expect anything else but that to happen? Having a form of godliness and denying the power thereof. 